Let's go. Okay. Um, political ecology or world ecology? Well, I think both. Political ecology, there are really two souls of political ecology. The first is the soul that says, yes, humans are a part of nature, and everything that humans do is therefore already bundled up with the web of life. And I think that philosophical position has long been with us in political ecology and in many other uh, fields of green thought in environmental sociology, uh, uh, environmental history, ecological economics, and so forth. The issue over the years has been how do we move from doing the political ecology of colonialism or neoliberalism or some other social process to understanding those core social processes of modernity, such as capital accumulation, uh, colonialism, nation building, nation state formation, as socio-ecological processes and projects in their own right. So in other words, how do we see the core processes of modernity, of culture, of power, of political economy, as already bundled with the rest of nature, in which capitalism becomes not only a producer of environmental changes, but a product of the web of life and, and involved in a historically and geographically cascading and uneven mosaic of changes. So that over time, the historical nature that capitalism produces in one era becomes very different in another era. And that nature becomes something more than an object. So I think political ecology has been in the middle of all of those contradictions. And I think where political ecology is today is in a process of rethinking and reevaluation that will lead us, I hope, to a post-Cartesian historical social science in which modernity is understood as a set of processes and projects to remake the web of life, but is also constituted through nature so that capitalism doesn't merely develop and act on nature, but it develops through the web of life and is transformed by a whole set of relations that are definitely not under the control of economic or political actors.